episode, we're creating an AI that learns to land a SpaceX rocket. The AI is using evolutionary algorithms controlling a neural network. Specifically, I'm using NEAT. My name actually appears in one of the seminal NEAT papers, so yay me! SpaceX rockets use what's called thrust vectoring, where the engine can tilt in any direction. Tilting the engine makes steering possible. We're simulating this in 2D, so the rocket engine can only tilt along one axis instead of two, but the principles are the same. From sources online, it's estimated that the engine can tilt perhaps 10 degrees in either direction. So that's the tilt I'm allowing my rockets. I was inspired to make this video partly from watching the very cool imagery of the SpaceX rocket's synchronized landing. That just blew my mind. but also from a recent number of videos demonstrating people doing thrust vectoring model rockets. Tom Stanton, and Tesla 500. Both made very impressive propeller-based models. Yo Bernard makes his with actual rocket engines. Very cool indeed. So, is it possible to evolve a control system for a SpaceX rocket? Of course it is. But how cool would it look? I'm hoping. Very cool indeed. When designing software you always test things along the way to make sure that the parts work before you bring it all together. In this case, even though the ultimate goal is to take off, travel a distance and land the rocket, we'll start with something simpler. For the first experiment, the rocket starts off in the air with a stationary target also in the air. The rocket is supposed to hover at the target position when the generation is over. The closer the rocket is at the end of the generation, the better. With this fitness function, the system is able to find strategies that have good fitness at the end of the generation. But if the generation was made slightly longer, the rockets would overshoot and perform very poorly. If we made the generation longer, the rockets would learn to approach the target slower and arrive at the end of the generation but still want to overshoot. Here we've modified the fitness function so that it depends on being close to the target and having a very low velocity at the end of the generation. We're also punishing rotation. The lemon donut represents the winner from the previous generation, so that's typically a good candidate to watch during the generation. It's a sad fact that for most generations, the previous winner becomes the winner yet again. Most generations perform no better than the previous generation. Dad, that's not true at all. For good measure, we're increasing the length of the generation as well. This means that the rocket must figure out how to turn back if it overshoots the target. Eventually, the rocket becomes quite good at hovering around the target, though they tend to approach it very slowly. This could be fixed by punishing arriving late at the target, but this will do for now. I created this simulation while sitting in a public ski lodge having endless cups of coffee. I suddenly realized that the shape of the rocket was off, somehow. That was not deliberate. Awkward! After some painting, I replaced it with this one, which I think is much nicer. Rockets! This odd waggling behavior is really annoying and I hope it goes away in our coming experiments. Hovering isn't landing, but it's a good start. 
for this step we're adding a landing pad where the rocket is supposed to land. If the rocket at any time touches the walls of the screen, it immediately dies. This is also punished in the fitness function. If a rocket dies and falls to the ground, it's considered worse than if it lived but yet isn't as close to the target. As you can see from these images, landing on Mars can be quite finicky. You have to be careful not to fall off the side of Mars into the cedar underbelly of the firmament. For a good landing, only the landing gears should touch the landing pad. If any other part of the rocket touches the landing pad, then that's bad. Think of it as a car. In a car, only the tires should ever touch the ground. If any other parts touch the ground, you're doing it wrong. The speed at which the rocket touches the landing pad is important. We want to minimize the impact velocity, so the impact velocity is added to the fitness function of the rocket. In this episode the fitness function should be as close to zero as possible. So adding these different penalties is relatively straightforward. We simply add impact velocity to the cost of the system and the system will try to minimize it. Have you ever seen anyone do this? with a rocket engine? I bet it would be a blast. Well, unless it was your face. Then that'd ruin your entire day. Now for the main event. The rocket is spawned on a platform some distance away from the target platform. It's expected to take off, travel to the landing platform and make a soft landing. We're adding a time penalty to the fitness function. We're not made of time and the rockets need to respect that. I can't guarantee that this is how Elon Musk designs his rocket control mechanisms. It does seem costly in terms of rocket crashes. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not how they do it. This truly isn't rocket science. On the other hand, looking at this video, there are similarities. In a real control system, the weight of the rocket would change from landing to landing or even during the flight. That influences how much force the rocket engine should generate and must be handled by the control system. There are delays in turning the rocket engine and changing the thrust, which I'm adding to the simulation. It can't simply change direction instantaneously. A real rocket would also have to be able to deal with weather, such as wind and rain, but that's where I draw the line. Let's try to make them even faster. I mean, these are rockets. If you have a rocket and it doesn't move fast, then what are you even doing? You might as well get a rocking chair. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy my previous video, AI Learns to Drive. Please like, subscribe and share. Share it with everyone. Everyone you know.
and as always, thanks for watching.